Hello to all of my BPTV fans, Facebook fans, YouTube fans. I'm Alan Levine, the talking machine, and I'm going to do my 18th Maria's Ideas Teaches Us to Paint. And I'm so excited. I can't believe I've been painting for 18 months now, and I hadn't done it for 50 years. I'm old. Welcome to Jonna's Art Studio. We are here. And Alan, you're not old. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're just <laughs> Well, the puppy. calendar doesn't you're lie. You're just but... a puppy. So <laughs> anyway, we are here at Jonna's Thank Art you. Studio on the hilltop, which is the inspiration for what we're painting today. So um, welcome if, you're, if you've been here before. Thank you for joining us. And we are here with our friend Meg O'Brien, and she is the Director of Economic Development for the Hilltop Alliance. So, yeah. welcome, Meg. Here, Thank you tilt, so much yeah. for having tilt, me. Tilt your apron a little, because you can promote Oh, yeah, me. there you go. You know I'm all about promotions. <laughs> Very good. I'll do my talking yeah. machine point. We got her on. Yeah, so do wonderful things here on the Hilltop. You can let everybody know, you know, what, what, what you do. You do a lot of things. But, a little um, synopsis yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So I work at the Hilltop Alliance. We are a nonprofit, and I specifically manage the business district programs in Allentown along East Warrington Avenue and Mount Oliver in Knoxville on Brownsville Road. Do a great job. You're awesome. Yeah. So many good things happening up here. So, okay, so we're going to get started, right? So yes. we are going to paint our gnome sitting on the hilltop, and this is the skyline of Pittsburgh. So we figured this could be maybe up in Mount Washington somewhere on one of those yeah. the slopes. So that was the inspiration here. So All right, so we are going to use, we're using seven different colors today. Oh my Instead of goodness. mixing the purple, I gave you the purple. So we're using white, red, uh, a deep blue, doesn't matter if you have something at home, any blue, yellow, green, purple, and black. All right. So let's get started. And we are going to paint the background first. You can use this. This is a um, one inch brush. This one's a little bit flimsy, but it's okay. Or you can use the half inch, whichever you feel comfortable with. I've, I think I'm going to use the big one though, and then we can use the smaller when we cut in around the gnome. So in on the artwork, we have, this almost looks like a teal color. If you want that with the blue we have, just mix a little green with it. You can do that on your paper plate. So we're going to do the sky, paint around the, the uh, moon. And, if, and, and again, you can see I have purple in here, I have the teal, I have black. We want it to be dark, you know, with the little, the moon's out. So whatever colors, however you want to lay them in. But I usually just start at the top and then work my way down and just fill in that, uh, the background. So you can mix it right on the canvas. I'm going to wet my brush and then just dry, just dab the extra water off. And um, so like I said, this brush, if it, if it doesn't push the paint around enough for you, you might want to use the smaller one. So we'll, I'll try it though. I'm going to mix a little bit on my palette first. I'm taking the purple and I do want that just maybe a little bit lighter. So I'm, cause it's a really deep, dark purple. So I mixed a little bit of white, but you can also, like I said, mix it on the canvas. And then you can see I'm just coming right up in and I'm just going to fill in and just keep that wet edge. You keep the, the paint moving, up and down, back and forth, and you don't have to do necessarily um, horizontal strokes or anything. You can do like oh, a okay. cross hatching. You can. I kind of do this kind of. I kind of see it kind of mixes off of the brush as you're doing. If I, you you do different, um, you just flip the brush kind of like that. It, it cleans the brush. It takes the paint off of the brush at the same time, and it gives it some texture. Now I'm laying in some of the darker purple. And this purple, this paint. All paints are not created equal, let me tell you. So, so these, they're, we're using um, just artist craft paints. Uh, the professional artist acrylics, the pigments are a little bit better, and uh, you can get, there are different uh, qualities of paint. But for something like this, you're just doing it at home, having fun. Any craft paints are fine. So some of them, this one is a little bit more transparent. So when I add the, the uh, white to it, it's, it's kind of... Um, just made, making it a little bit more opaque for me. So we can see I'm just blending it in and then once I take a look at it, okay, maybe I want some little darker spots here or there. You just, like I said, you can just blend it on the canvas, but 
I did do most of this upper portion, but I, I'm going to stick, switch to my smaller half inch brush. Uh, uh, I'm going to follow you. Yeah, then. I'm mm -hmm. switching. I just feel like I'm going to be cutting in now and, and that'll work fine. It's just a little bit stiffer. Um, if your brushes are too flimsy when you're using a thicker paint, this is our paint is a little bit of a heavy, heavy body paint. Um, it will, you know, it just doesn't move around. Is this a easy. first for our show? Heavy body paint? Well, it's it's a little <laughs> thicker. There are more liquids. Just asking. It, it's more like a medium, I should say. The heavy heaviest is is really thick. You would use like a palette knife or something. Oh, so okay. the stiffer the brush, the easier it is to kind of push it around. When the brush is too flimsy, it just doesn't work so great. Um, so I am going to. I like that teal color. You can use just the straight blue. This is more like an ultramarine blue. But I'm going to mix. I took the blue. I put that on my palette, and whenever you're mixing a couple colors, I like to put them beside each other, and then just introduce here and you know just a little bit, and you can always add more. So I just added some green to my blue, and that's kind of giving me that teal color. And if I add a little bit of white, can you see that, Ellen? Too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now I like that color, and the, and the acrylics always dry darker. So I like this color, but if I really like it, I want to keep it, I have to add a little bit of white because it's going to dry. So if I add a tiny bit of white, it's going to brighten it up a little bit so it shows up, but that's pretty much that color there and it's going to dry darker. And I'm just blending it. You can see, I'm just kind of blending it. I just like it with this purple. And you can see, I just mixed it back in. I kind of just pulled some of that purple back down. I'm just, wherever it goes, just kind of, kind of just like clean my brush off with the wow. paint. Just kind of move it around and um, that's all. And it doesn't have to look like this. Just make it your own. Don't worry about matching the design. You don't have to worry. I will. No. I know. <laughs> Alan has his own style for sure. I like it. I'm Very, trying to be light-handed today. Yes. No, you do your thing. You do you. And well, let's see. That's what I'm attempting. Yeah. And then also on the image here, you can see it would be a little bit brighter where the moon is, right? Because of the light yeah. of the moon. So it's darker on that right side, lighter on the left side because that's where the moon is. So as I make more of that teal color, I'll keep it a little darker. I won't add the white. In fact, I'm going to add a tiny bit of black to it mm. because that will make it really nice and dark. And then I'm cutting in, you can see just around the gnome, I'm just using the corner of the brush like that. And you can use a smaller brush if you'd like. I gotta go smaller. But you can. And um, I just use the corner. Thank I'm you just, for your guidance. I'm, <laughs> I'm an impatient painter. I don't like to take the time to switch brushes. I don't like to take time to clean it if I don't have to. So. Well, you clean it as you're painting. Exactly. I've learned this. Yes. So <laughs> I, I choose my colors in a way, in a manner that you can start with one a brighter or lighter and it will transition into the next color. And if they blend, it makes a nice, nice, uh, hue also for color you they could see um, so you can see I'm just kind of blending it's still a little bit wet which is good acrylics do dry really quickly so if you want to blend you just kind of keep it moving you know that looks great oh thank you I love it oh good colors see I like how they mixed in there that looks great yeah just whatever whatever you like and then I'm going back down in and I'm just filling in my all the way down and then when you get to the buildings which is the skyline our awesome skyline in pittsburgh you just cut in around again cover up the little lines i have a um every video that we do you can watch it on bptv on their youtube channel you can also watch it on maria's ideas art and on my on my youtube channel i do make a 10 minute uh tutorial for every video if you're not comfortable drawing on your own freehand, I do a little video that just kind of helps you lay out the design on the canvas. So, and you can see I'm just laying the brush. I'm just kind of cutting it. It doesn't have to be perfect. We'll clean up the edges of the buildings with the black. You know, we just want to get that sky color. And then, like I said, it needs to be a little bit lighter, maybe down here. But yeah, just kind of move the paint around, show the, this would be considered back in the day, you know, an artist were getting bolder and they were mixing colors like this, uh, you know, or actually keeping them a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit bolder, but then also um, their brush strokes and their techniques were looser and more impressionistic and 
um, I just think it's interesting and, and everybody does have their own style so that's why I said just whatever it feels good to you you know add however it feels good when you're throwing that the paint on the canvas just it all feels good to yeah, me just Thank you. Your <laughs> well like some people and even you've seen here too probably Alan the some people have more of a whiskey uh, hand wh wispy, not whisk. Could I say wispy? Wispy. <laughs> wispy. No booze wispy. today. No, no. It's almost the weekend. Exactly. <laughs> wispy. A wispy kind of um, hand. Start your weekend yeah. early with whiskey painting. Yeah. I would. I'm not a drinker, we so that it. would not me be good neither, for me. Me neither. No. One glass of wine would be enough. You give me some chocolate. I'll eat some chocolate. All right, Sarah's to yeah. the rescue. Tasty candy too. Stage yeah, boy. Candy across the street is great too. Yep. That looks awesome, Meg. Oh, so thanks. I'm just going. To, I'm going to just block in the this the city. But while I'm blocking it in, um, so you know, people, I don't have to really explain that. Do you want to talk about anything? You know that you have go. I know you have so yeah. many things going on all the time, and what's whatever's at the top of your mind. Area, go ahead. Or, sure thing. Yeah. Um, we so, trust you. Yeah, in my role, I'm really fortunate to be able to work with a lot of awesome business owners. Mm -hmm. um, Can you name any of them? Yeah, of sure. course. Go ahead, you have permission. Uh, Jano's art studio, Maria's <laughs> ideas, there you go. of course. And then over in Allentown, uh, all of Amelia is there, which a lot of people recognize. Oh, yeah. Bottle Rocket Social Hall. Yeah. Yep. Um, the Grim Wizard Coffee Shop. Whoa. Glass, Salon Ivy. There's I know. a lot of, I'm, and, uh, and there's more too. Um, I don't I mean to it. forget anyone, but that. Uh, well, I wanted those you to highlight some, a few, so yeah, thank you. Yeah, those are just a few. Yeah. And then over in Mount Oliver, we have. TC Candy right across yep. the street, the Cheese Queen. Cheese. Well, yeah. you got to mention um, Legends. Fished. I used to own that building when it was the Tipper Inn. Oh. Back in 1977, I bought it. Wow. Right before my 21st birthday, so you can't yeah. forget so them. So much history. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> I'm part of it. Yeah. <laughs> in this community. I wish you were around then. Yeah. Oh, me too. oh, I know. There's so many. I mean. <laughs> well, no, I don't want you to be older. So. <laughs> no. But. <laughs> You're good. Meg. <laughs> Thank and, you for doing that, Meg. Yeah, Meg yeah. and the people uh, like Hilltop Alliance has made such a big difference in this community. I've seen it. I've been here 42 years. I've definitely seen a big difference and it's very positive and it's exciting we have people coming from all over I'm sure you're meeting people right yeah we have people from all over the country coming in the studio we have our um, open house going on right now in the last six days seven days we've had people from Utah Ohio California uh, quite a few from Texas um, Rhode Island they're not visiting they're moving here Wow. they're yeah. moving to this up here on yeah. the hilltop Get yeah. a hold it's, of Meg. And yeah, the, so uh, yeah. call well, her. Great segue, <laughs> I mean, ladies. You're coming from all over. Keep painting uh, and yeah. get this information out. Yeah. Listen closely. So if anyone's uh, you know planning to open up a business or interested, uh, we have special programs in these districts. Yeah. We do. How do website. they get a hold of you? You can get a hold of me. My email is meg at pghhilltopalliance.org. Write that down. Or my, uh, if you want to call my business phone, it's 412-712-3306. Uh -huh. Our website, if you look up the Hilltop Alliance, will have a list of our resources. Um, on the business side, we do rent abatement grants, so supporting businesses in their yep, first year with great. a storefront. Yeah technical assistance with marketing, mm. yeah. um, signage, nice. facade. What don't you so. do? <laughs> we, That's quite the list. Yeah. I'm impressed. Um, and then in the Hilltop, you know, in the 11 neighborhoods that are here, uh, my colleagues also work on property stabilization grants. Oh, wow. And really I know. It's fantastic. And it's so made, grants uh, are available? Yes. That's such well, a key and they thing help with grants. You and it, grant, I think it's overwhelming, right? For most people, you say grant, oh, but they help you figure that out and navigate through that oh, process. Oh, you can write a grant for them because I know well, how complex it is. They, or guide we help them. them fill out our grant application. Yeah. Okay, and, well, that's what I'm getting yeah. to. Yeah, yeah. And you they, can help And they them. connect you with the right people. And um, there are things out there for people, but if you don't know how to do it or who to call, it's just great. We love it. We used to be the young people here on the hilltop of the business. Now we're the old people. But Hold it. Like you it. said I'm not. You said I'm not old. <laughs> we're middle aged. Okay. No, I'm old. Um, yeah. I'm so, old. all right. So you can see I have the city skyline done. So I have I blocked that in. We can add little details if we want. I really don't have many details in uh, the design because it's in silhouette, right? So. We're going to work on the little gnome now, okay? You are. We're a little behind. Yeah, well, that's okay. I'm, I'm way behind time. you, ladies, so carry so on. So you can see that's just blocked in, and then we're going to work on the little 
the gnome. I am going to lightly kind of um, outline the gnome, not to leave the outline. We're going to cover them back up, but just to kind of, you'll see. Are you outlining it black? I'm using the black, but I don't, I want it to be a softer black. So I'm going to take black and just mix any other color with it. I'll just grab green. Whoa. Just to soften it up a little bit, take some green maybe. So it's just not a true, like a harsh, harsh black. And then you want, so I'm using the little round brush and I'm mm -hmm. adding water to it. And then when, you, when you're trying to paint a line, you see how I'm twirling the brush? And that puts the bristles back into a little point and you pull it, because you want that nice little point. And then I'm just coming in and very loosely, like that's just kind of sketchy. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just getting it just kind of real quickly, loosely sketching the outline of the gnome. So that, and we're going to cover a lot of this up too, but I'm just doing this just to give it some definition. Some of these lines we will need, um, but, and you can even use, well, I, I, yeah, the black's okay. I was gonna say you could even use a brown or a, a different color, but you'll see it'll, it'll come together. And then just like outline, these are little flowers that he's holding. And you can see I'm just using, so I just go back in, I get that little tip, you know, again, mm -hmm. and just come and just reload the brush. And then I'm just real quickly, not all of the details, but you can see I'm just defining the his little legs and where everything is. And then <laughs> he has his little bag. He has maybe like, maybe he went and got some pierogies somewhere. Whoa. At, at one of the <laughs> churches or restaurants. And he has little pierogies in his bag. They're very popular if you're not familiar with pierogies in, in Pittsburgh. I love them. I even have some behind me. I, I make a lot of um, pierogies out of clay. <laughs> and um, so I, I, it was kind of out of, I don't even know how I even started doing it. It was like around the holidays last year. And I made some clay pierogies and I brought them up. And within weeks, I ended up making about, I think I made over a hundred pierogies at the holidays. Wow. And um, then I started stamping words on them that relate to Pittsburgh and She's things. prolific. And um, well, I do that when I'm in the evenings. If I'm sitting watching TV, I can't just sit still. So I do things like that. And um, so anyway, what so we, that's, that maybe he has some little pierogies in his bag. All right, and then you can see, and mostly this will come in handy when we do his, like I'm outlining his little mustache, where his nose is, and I'm not going to do the eyes right now because we're, we are have to fill in his cheeks and his face. So you can just get an idea where he is, where everything is, and then we're going to color it in, but we still want to cover up some of these lines. So it kind of seems like, why did we do it if we're covering up? But it just, we're going to leave some of it, and let me show you here, on See how it's a little darker? Instead of painting it all and going back in and trying to outline and then the outline gets too thick, this way we'll be able to achieve a very fine, thin black line because we'll cover some of it up, but we'll leave a little bit. And that just, it's a, a different way of getting the little uh, contour lines. And this is the there. advanced course. So yeah. Listen, please. Yeah. So let's see. So I did that and now I'm going to, you can put whatever color you want on his hat. I'm using red because the red's going to pop. Reds and yellows really pop and our eyes see those usually first. And you can see I'm going over my black lines, but you can still see it and that will still help define that. And I'm just coming across, I'm using this little quarter inch brush. Now keep in mind when you paint this hat and the rest of his body, if you have a light source when you're painting, usually you do. You figure out where's your light source and then we're putting little highlights on his hat and highlights on his clothes and on the hilltop, okay? So just figure out where, if you put the moon on the other side, your, your highlights will be on the other side. So if you, when you're painting with red and you want highlights, if you use white, that's fine, but you will get pink. I don't necessarily want a pink hat on him, so I'm using yellow because yellow is a warm color. It will make the red brighter, but it won't turn it pink. I can still add a little bit of white after it dries, but you could see by putting this little bit of yellow on here, it just looks like that <coughs> light is hitting his little hat, okay? And we'll let that dry, and then you can also, we'll get the moon done shortly too, but that, the, uh, we have to just kind of imagine that that light is coming on him. And um, this is a little quarter inch 
filbert brush. It's a little round. And we're going to use this for most of the rest of him. So we need to make a whatever color you want his face. Do you want it brown, black, orange, purple, fleshy, whatever. I'm going to mix yellow, red, maybe a little bit of blue. So that kind of gives me a light brown. I'll add some more white to that. So I just mixed the primary colors, yellow, red, and blue. Okay. If you want them darker, add more blue. If you wanted a warmer color, you can make them a pink. You can make a pink face, which would be kind of cute too. A little bit of red and white. Like that's kind of, I'm going to do that, kind of rosy. So I, I did make that little brown, but then I added some of the, the white to it and, and a little bit more red and made it like a rosy pink color. And then I'm just coming in with that little brush. We have to make sure that black line is dry. If it's not, just give that a couple seconds to dry. And I'm just blocking in his little face. And then we'll do this hand. I guess, yeah, we could see this hand a little bit. And this one. I'm going to do his clothes, his body, all of that first. And then we'll do his beard after because his beard's laying on top of his clothes. You know, oh, that looks cute. And then actually while I had that brown, let me do a little bit more. We can do his little boots, okay? So this I made a little bit darker, red, blue, and yellow. We'll get his little pants. Oh no, his pants are blue. Sorry, I take that back. <laughs> right. So his little boots, I'm going to block them in, and then I'll add some little detail as if they're little furry, kind of furry, little. I'm not a fan of using fur, but he's a gnome, so make, I probably collected the like fur that flies off of animals when they're, because he's tiny, Whoa. when they when they groom themselves, you know. So anyway, so I got his little, I'm again, blocking them in. The, the front, the toes of his boots, we're going to put the little, make those a little brighter because the, the light would be hitting the tops of his boots. You could see there, a little bit here. And it looks a little different than my original, then that's fine, no biggie. But, um, so we have to keep in, in mind, again, where that light is going to hit. So maybe this will be a lighter, and I'll add some detail on this. I'll make them look a little fluffy. So we have his boots, and then his little belt is brown, if you're doing it brown. And then he'll have his little buckle on, too. And then his little, his little bag is also brown. You can mix a little black with these colors, too, if you want a nice little brown color. I do, I am mixing a little bit of yellow because I want it more of like a mid-tone brown. So we have there. So you can see I'm bringing, I'm covering up some of that line, but I'm leaving it. So like that, get, that gives me this tiny little black line, which would have been difficult to do. Mm -hmm. But when you cover some of it up and leave a bit of it, it just, it gives you a nice little tiny line without trying to struggle and get a perfect little line. And then his, his, he has little jeans on, so I have blue. I'm adding some white, okay. And I'll just block in his little, his little jeans. And then let's see, and then purple. I'll add some little purple for his, I have his, because we're, we are re uh, introducing a color that's in the sky. When you reuse, re, reintroduce some of the same colors, in a painting, it makes it a little more cohesive. You're repeating some of those colors. Kind of keeps your eye moving around. So you can see how, again, I covered up some of those black lines, but I did leave them. So we're blocking everything in. Then we will add the highlights. I'll put a little shadow under here. So he doesn't have too much dimension yet because of that. He looks flat, right? Mm -hmm. Blocking it in. And then once that dries a little, we'll put our little highlights again on that side. So I'm just blocking in and then I'm going to block in his beard and his little mustache. Mustaches are popular right now in Pittsburgh, right? <laughs> because of our I ball player. I wouldn't know the ball that. player. No, the new baseball player. Uh, the Pittsburgh the pirate guy. I I've had mine since I was twenty one years old. What's the guy's My name? Man too. Skeens. I don't know. Paul Skeens. Yeah, and uh. he has a mustache. He's a young guy, but he has a mustache. And now you, everybody in the stands are like, like, like taping on like fake no, plastic he, mustaches. He, he caught up to me. It's so funny. Yeah. I got to go to a Pirates game. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. It's all about the mustache right now. So I just blocked yeah. it. Yeah. And then we have, I'll grab my little round brush again. We have the little daisies. 
that he picked and I'm just using the white and I'm just using that little tip. So anything that's in the front, you paint after. You paint the things in the back first. So I painted his clothes. The flowers were in front of his clothes. So you could see I painted that first and then the little petals were overlap the, the, um, the clothes. So you could see I'll do So I one. use primary colors for the flesh on behind? Yeah, primary and then um, uh, some white and probably a little bit more of the red and white, less of the blue. Okay, so more red. Red, white, yellow, a little All bit right. of blue. Like, see how you see how it comes out. See how you like it. Well, you know I'm heavy-handed, so you are. Okay. I appreciate your guidance. I mean, you can make his face purple if you want. Do whatever. No, Next the sky looks really, purple to me, so it's I'm an good. Art. <laughs> it's <laughs> truly. It's well, culture experiment. <laughs> when, yeah, it is. And when you use the color, when you when you look at a color wheel and the color theory, and you understand it, it's very easy because you just you break it down to warm colors, cool colors. Then you have your like tertiary colors. We won't get into all that. Whoa, <laughs> yeah. not tertiary. It, yeah. <laughs> it, Unbelievable. It, you know, colors that are beside the other colors. Maria color keeps wheel. taking me to a new level. Yeah, but um, it's just fun. And it also, when you learn. I'm having fun, thank you. Just get a color <laughs> wheel or Google a color wheel, right? And um, just I'm look at I'm listening to Maria. It's so. also, if you, when you understand how they complement each other, how they make one color might make another one pop. You can apply those same theories in decorating your home, mm. wearing your clothes. Um, if you were wearing, uh, say, um, a blue outfit and you wanted a contrast, you want it to pop, you use an opposite color on the color wheel, like orange or yellow, like yellow even is, a, you know, on the other side too, it's a little warmer color. You use a warmer color and it'll be like, you know, it'll, it'll pop. And you, yeah. you, you use different um, color Thank you theory. for explaining this yeah, to all of us, Maria. Oops, principles of that when you paint and create things and decorate I've your I've been home. learning for 18 months, so thank yeah. you. Yeah, sure. Reds and yellows draw your eye. So you can see our, your eye's going right to his hat. Uh -huh. So we will put a little bit of red, like maybe on the moon, maybe down in the grass. Um, so you could see right here, I just locked it in. Now I just took some little, I took this little brush and you can see I'm adding just a couple little details. Wow. See his little fluffy boots, maybe some little shadow. I mean, again, keep in mind, just remember we are light source, so there'd be shadow, right? Yeah. A little bit under the cuff because it sticks out further. So you just look, you just zoom in on each part and, and instead of looking at the big picture, it gets overwhelming. So this part of his boot would stick out further, so there'd be a shadow here. This part would be up higher, so that would have some light on it, and that way it doesn't get as overwhelming. This right here would have a little shadow because his arm is there. Mm. And that's really all you do is just look at each individual little section and determine where that shadow would go. There'd be a little shadow maybe on this side under his beard, and then <coughs> under his arm where his arm is here. And, and just, it's kind of like zooming in with the camera, you know, just zoom in. Oh, good analogy, yeah. yeah. Mm. And then the same with his beard. Now I'm going to pick out some details on here. I'm using black, but not just, I mix, I don't know, I just grab colors. I mix white, <laughs> I mix blue. You just need some color to define where his mustache is. And we have his little, oop, got too much water on there. There would be a shadow under his little mustache. Okay, and then there, and then maybe where his mouth is, and then over here, I'm just taking <coughs> and pulling that, the tip, just to give it some like, little texture. You can give him some little wiggly, little brush strokes on his, on his beard. I'm even putting a little bit of purple in his beard. Why not? Whoa. Right? Once you go numb, you never go home. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Right? So true. We have, um, I have some na a neighbor. <laughs> we'll not find far out. From us. Yeah, <laughs> she has, she has some gnome stuff going on in her yard. It's so funny. And she like changes them all the time. And I'm not crazy about the way this little staff looks. All right. Oh, uh, that's a little better. Okay. And then I'll pick out like his nose and his oh, cheeks. If you need, <laughs> yeah. So uh, his nose and his cheeks, I'm going to outline them. I'm using red and I mix some yellow with it because I just want his little, I want his little rosy cheeks. See how I'm going over that black again. If you want him to be more <coughs> cartoony, you can leave more of the black, but I, I don't. I want less. So a little bit of his little rosy cheeks there and his nose. Ooh, there's a lot of red there. 
And then I will also put a highlight on his nose and his little cheeks with the white. You could even use a little yellow. So his little cheeks, I'll get the white here because his little cheeks will have the higher point, right, of where your, your cheeks are. That would get the light. And then his nose on that side. And once it dries, we're blocking this in. We, we paint, you know, fairly quickly here. You can always go back in and you can add your little <coughs> details. So that's his little nose. I think I'm going to put a little bit of yellow on his nose. And I'm putting a little bit of yellow over here on his beard. Just again for that How little. How are you holding up, Megan? He's good. Good. good yeah. You're doing looks well. Good, Yours Alan. looks great. Oh, thanks. So you can see there, and let's see. I did outline, I did the little brown belt and then a little, with a little little round brush, just grabbed, put that little detail on his belt like a buckle. And his little jeans, if you want more of like a lighter denim, just add a little green again to the, the blue, and that will give you more of a denim look. So you can see, I'm just mixing colors, whatever color you have, add a little bit of white or a darker tone, black or something to it, to make it darker or lighter, whatever you need. Oops, need my brush. Need that a little bit darker in there. Okay. So now I'm going, so he's all blocked in and I think I should give him some eyes. So I have my little guy, he's just <coughs> kind of smiling under his mustache, right? So. Instead of painting eyes or eyeballs, I'm just giving him little, this, this is his eye right here. Well, oh, I beat you Just like too. that. <laughs> and even if you wanted to do a little something like that, like he has the little wrinkles in the corner. I mm -hmm. had to be different. I poked eyes in there. Okay. Oh, I okay. was moving okay. down and I said, I got to pop okay. an eye in there. That's fine. <laughs> it's, your, it's your painting. You Keep told me that, so I'm yep, going with so I'm it. I'm doing a little. And you can too out there. Yeah. Oops, just like that. So his little, like he's a little smiling. Okay, and then again, while I have the black on my brush, if I, I look back and see, do I need anything, little detail, do I need a little <coughs> shadow, and kind of pick that out, too. He looks, his eyes look a little uh, off to the side, but I will, we'll have to fix him a little bit. All right, so we have that, little highlight. And then I'm going to move to the grass that he's, sitting on this little hilltop. Yeah, we have great, we have little parks up here. We have the Southside Park, which has trails and waterfalls, and we have Goat Fest up there. Yeah. Um, we get a lot of people for Goat Fest now. I'm surprised, like a lot of people. It's a lot of fun. Music and food and just, it's just fun to meet people, meet different people. I love this area. I've been here forever, lived here my whole life. And it, I love the diversity of, the area, people from all over the world, like all over the place are just moving here. It's close to town, it's close to the south side. You can get anywhere, north, south, east, west. It's very centrally located, which is very convenient. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of good events this summer too. Yeah. The uh, Allentown Night Market happens twice yes. a year. I know, I love that. So, wow, June that is great. October. Yes. Um, there's going to be a Pride event on June yep. 15th in Mount Oliver. Yep, and they have the live music on fr Friday nights. Yep. Fridays. And yep. the live Where's music that is at? Right down off. here, the sh right down the street here. Um, 150 Brownsville Road. Mm -hmm. Nice. Little, little deck. Yep, little deck. It's real cute. Yeah. I love it. There's action here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I get you. I just added some little highlights. I might have to do a little more, but right now that's what I have going on there. I can see his face needs a little bit of work, but I just want to move on to that this bottom area. So what I'm doing here, the in the artwork, I have more of an olive green. Uh -huh. I don't want a very harsh green. I don't want it to be too bold. So with the colors that we have, if we have, we start with this green. So this green's pretty bright, right? Yeah. What color do we add to, it's referred to as knocking it back. We want to not, we still want it green, but we want to knock it back so it's not so intense, the intensity. Yellow? Uh, no. White? No. <laughs> we, want to, we want to keep it green, but not so bold and bright. Blue? The, the uh, saturation. <laughs> or, or yes. Okay, wrong and wrong. Um, we add red because red uh, is the opposite. I know the last guess. one. You picked, you picked everyone except. 
So when we're on you, the same page. <laughs> Way off. So I should grab my little color roll. Red and green are opposites. Okay. Okay. So they cancel out and each in other. And a tray a too. Okay. okay. All right. So if I so here's my green. It's very bright, but just add a little bit at a time. I'm gonna add a little bit of red. Uh, so see how it's still green. Wow. But it's more of a forest green, right? I want more of an olive green, so I add even a little bit of yellow, and it'll warm it up. Ooh. So you see I that did pretty, say yellow. Well, but you still need the. <laughs> that's if you I caught warm you. It. But you. I caught you. Yeah, you need the red though to. Like, you taught me a few things, yes. so. You need the red to knock it back, and then you can. All you right. Know. But you, yeah, yellow was in there at some point. I'm not that advanced, but thank yeah. you. Yeah. So, and I just took the half inch, I just dripped some water on my canvas. That's why oh my I'm goodness. around a lot here. <laughs> She's so, getting more advanced. I know. <laughs> and then, like, if you want it this lighter. This is great. Yeah, so you just add white. So you get, your, right. you get your base color, red and green, a little bit of red, or as much, however dark you want. And then, if you want to warm it up, you add your yellow. You want to lighten it up, you add your white. So I'm wow. coming in, and just like this, real quick, I'm just turning my brush sideways, and I'm just blocking this in. Just like that, and then he has, or the hill. There's yellow, so I'm just doing it wet on wet. I'm throwing that yellow in right now. You could see, as I'm just mixing it right on the canvas, because again, that moon. We have to get our moon painted. Wow. I'll do good. that next. So I'm just pushing it through, and then a little darker. I'm going to put. Um, you can even add some little bit of purple to it if you want. We do want to introduce a little bit of purple down here at some point. Oops, I covered up my yellow. Because it'll be darker. Ooh, look at that. I got a little drips. It looks like little windows in there. It does. Mm. See that? I might have to do some more of those. So yeah. that's it. So just kind of block in the the grass, the hilltop, mossy. Maybe it's a little n n mossy knoll, you know, that he's <coughs> sitting on. See, that got too bright in there. And Did then, you say grassy knoll? Yeah. Okay, that's I historic. Know. It is. No, we won't talk about that. That, just, that was bad. Yeah. But yeah. Um. <laughs> I just caught you. <laughs> All right. So I have my green and then I just kind of moved it around real quick because I wanted to show some little bit of texture in there too. And then let's see. I think I'm going to add, I have my green. I'm going to add a little bit of red again to knock that back. I am going to add a little bit of purple because I want some of that hue, that purple. It's still green. It's kind of like a a gray green but if you can see by putting a little bit of that purple in there and also uh, shadows in nature um, if you're painting or if you're outside or you do photography pay attention to the light and the shadows that helps you with your artwork and also shadows in nature tend to look purple or mm -hmm. lavender so it makes sense to our eyes when wow. we're viewing artwork or something if you mix in the purples for the shadows so this green at the bottom this would be maybe a little bit more in shadow down here, but you can see by introducing the purple, it gives it some shadow, but it also helps bring some of that, that tone, that hue from up there. And again, we're just repeating colors, which makes for a good composition there. So, so just kind of move it around. And then I'm not even cleaning my brush. I'm just taking black and coming right up under there. And you can see how the edge of this is real messy, right? Mm -hmm. But I'll clean it up. See, I'll clean it up. I'm kind of shaking my brush a little, so I want that to look like it's, you know, whatever, little little nature thing, and that there aren't too many <laughs> straight lines in nature. And I cleaned up that edge with the black. Cool. So when you do a darker color up against the lighter, you could do that. And then I'm doing my black under here. Now this, again, it's a little darker over here in this corner because that moon is over there, which, man, we've got to paint that moon. We've got to get back to that moon. So. But in here, I don't want it quite as dark. So I'm not even cleaning my brush. I'm grabbing, I still have black on that. I'm grabbing some green or whatever is on my palette. Mm -hmm. And I'm just throwing it in and I'm just doing some brush strokes. Even maybe this way, maybe the, the hillside, you know, would kind of be the, uh, the, the soil or whatever could possibly be, maybe look like that. Again, you could do it any way you want. And then I even have a little bit of that teal color again, you know, again, repeating these colors mm -hmm. on the edge of this. But I think I'm gonna use a little brush. So I just wanna get a little bit of this teal color repeated again. So I'm just putting it, make it just, it's just fun. Again, it's 
Would it be like that in nature? I don't know. Maybe it would, maybe it wouldn't, but it's, a, it's an art, right? It's a painting. You could do anything you want. Makes sense to me. Yeah, see, by just again repeating that color, just kind of pulls it down. And then I, I like this color too, and I could see like even maybe down closer to the buildings, usually the sky is brighter at the horizon. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of that color right back in there. I feel like now I'll just blend it out. All right, so while that's drying, because I can do my little flowers in there, I'm going to paint the moon. You can oh. put a face. You can put a face on the moon too, right? Little man in the moon, if you want. Uh, you gonna do that, Al? I'm thinking about it. I know. I think I was gonna should. put a little green cheese on the moon. Oh, a little green cheese. <laughs> yeah, remember they used to say it was made out of green cheese. I remember cheese, but I don't remember being green. But yeah. hey, whatever you say. Me well, green, the aliens came cheese? down, so yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you do see it like green when it's like alien looking things. Exactly. Huh? I had to bring that out to I you since it. you just were there. Yeah. <laughs> Ancient alien. That's right. <laughs> okay, I am going to paint the moon. So I'm taking white. I'm just taking my little filbert brush, which is this round, curved, little hair. Little curved brush, you can see a little curved. And yeah. I, anytime you paint something, it's curved filbert. So I'm coming in, I'm gonna, and then when I just lay the brush down. If I lay the brush down and, pr and press, I let that edge of that curved brush create my curve. See, and I'm just, you just move your, you just pull your hand around. Wow. And you can see how it cuts in. So you can see it cleaned up that rough edge, right? Yeah. So even you could even make your moon a little bit bigger. It'll clean that all up for you if you want to. Wow. And then just then I'm using turning my hand the other way and just again I'm pressing down on the brush and just letting it just clean up that edge. And my my moon just got a little bit wonky. Uh -oh. So I will fix that. Uh, yeah, very, fix the wonk. Very wonky. I'll use the purple. I'll use the sky colors again. And I am going to put in, you can see a little bit of yellow. Again, I didn't clean my brush. I took the white and I went right into the yellow. I put some on the moon there. And then, but leave, see, I put that yellow, but I left that little white. Because that would be that, it would be reflecting the edges. So mm. you leave that little white edge, but put that shadow there. And, and it has a little bit of yellow in the white, so it's not a bright white, so I'm going to let that dry, and then I will add um, the bright white to that. And then any little white highlights you add, you can see, well, well whoops, I just actually got some red on his shirt. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I might have to cut now. But That's why it's your painting, not yeah. ours. I'll let that dry a little <laughs> Very bit. Oh good. yeah, look, see I got all kinds of different colors going on here. All right, I'm gonna let that dry. I'm not taking notes, so carry no. on. <laughs> just all you have to do is remember where the light source is coming from and just put your paints darker light accordingly. And okay, so I, I'm gonna quit messing with him right now. I'm gonna clean up my sky around the moon. So I just, I'm using a little brush. I just wet it, want it a little bit wetter and I'm just coming in. I'll just do something like that around there. And I'm doing some little, I don't know, just something like that. Little, little rings around it. Again, mm -hmm. you don't have to just, I wet the brush a little bit more, put a little bit water. And then the little stars. So I uh -uh. have my, the little, little round brush right now. <clears throat> going into the white and I'm making sure I do have some water on it so I can get I feel like maybe this one make sure you get that nice little point um, if your brush is stiff it's a new brush just wet it first and it'll take the glue out of the bristles okay so I got my I have my little little brush and I'm doing this I want some little stars right just a few of them bigger so I'm doing a little line Wow. Vertical and horizontal. And then you just start in the center and come out. Mm. And that gives you like a little starburst. Okay, and I'll do one bigger there. I'm doing another little one here. And just, I like odd numbers for, <laughs> well, when things are in design, like odd numbers are kind of good, like for balancing. And then, this is the fun part. Uh -uh. I, you're like this. We've done this. You're going to spray. Once. It's kind of wet. I put in the white, and I have a clean brush here, mm -hmm. and my with the, it's a little bit more water happening on my. I don't I don't take the extra water and just take the clean brush. 
and just tap it. Ooh. Look how cute. Unbelievable. And I'm letting them go in the buildings. It looks like windows, right? Yeah, Where's nice it? touch. So that you can see it's a little bit wetter, so they're coming out smaller. If you want the bigger, make it, uh, you know, keep the paint Hold thicker. it, I'm bold. Don't tease I'm the bold. I'm putting them down here, too. I'm just, I like <laughs> Don't the, tease the bold out of me. Come on, I'll keep it Yeah, even dainty. here, you could see the little freckle. They look like little, maybe they're little specks on the dirt or something. I don't know, but it's just fun to do that. Might and be I, a meteor piece of yeah. shower. So. And I, I'm adding a little bit of the darker purple. I felt like that needed that up there. Mm -hmm. And then our little flowers, we use the same little filbert, little little round brush. And I'm taking, I want daisies. So I'm taking it and putting it in the white. And I just do, yeah, um, you start, picture a circle, picture like a wheel. And you start out here and you go to the center. You can even do a center dot if you want. And you just out, come in, out, come in and you just do that and that gives you your little flower and that's with the, mm. the little filbert. So if you put the little dot that kind of maybe give you an idea of where you want them. And if you want them tinier, you can use that little round brush. But I'm going to use the filbert. I'm turning the filbert on its side. If I turn it this way, you'll see it be bigger. Okay, it'll be the shape of the brush. And that could be bigger because this flower's in the foreground. This one's back a little farther. I'm going to turn the brush sideways and you can see I'll get a smaller one if you want to think about that and then the center of the flower I think I'm going to on the artwork I have yellow but now that I'm looking at this I feel like I need to repeat that red because it's only on his hat and I still want your eye to kind of move around so I'm taking the red and I'm going to put the red in the middle of the flower instead and that kind of see how it just your eye pull gets pulled around with the red so put that red in there and now um, I think I just like have to look at his face, look at, see if anything needs fixed. And I do feel like it needs a little bit here, maybe his hand. Check out your highlights and shadows because once you get everything blocked in, that's, it's just a matter of that. Just highlights, shadows. I feel like maybe a little, little more highlight up in here. You can even do something like this if you want it to look like a couple little blades of grass. Take your little brush and pull it up that way if you want maybe just around him and that's pretty much it I'm just going to like I said I'll, I'll just kind of play around with it and see if I need anything you guys look they look I'm good, good. You, I just you, need you, my yeah. bottom part I'll have to yeah get you're that. good mm -hmm. so I'm just going to um, yep I think we're good I'm just going to I'll pick out the little details after it dries so, um, and then we'll finish and we'll come back for our reveal. Okay. Yeah, perfect. So keep painting, right? And, um, okay. We'll see you in a few. Okay. guys we are going to reveal the finished paintings you did so well they are awesome yay thank you for the expertise to get oh, this done oh you guys did a great job yeah, thank you so much for having me oh, thank you're you for welcome. being here we know you're so busy to we appreciate your time thank okay. you for making the time to be on yeah. maria's ideas teaches us to yay. paint mm -hmm. all right they look great really really great i love the little stars the speckles so I might have to go up on one of those trails and see if I can find one of these little gnomes. Up yeah, there. <laughs> yeah, there might be one. Bring yeah. one with you. So next episode will be episode 19, right, Ellen? Yes. 19. So we've been focusing on artists and musicians this year. So uh, a um, 
He's a teacher at Bethel Park, but he's also he's a musician. So we are going. And this design, it's I did not create. It, you know, I it's my version of this design that you you see. It's very popular design here yes. and there. Yes. And um, I like the birds. Yeah, there. I so, can't wait. So that's going to be episode nineteen, and that is called um, Imagination Island. So we're going right. there. We'll be All there. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> um, See you next time.